Yeah. So as you know, eToro is a social trading platform, right? So that means that in our own ecosystem, social dialogue between users of our 30 million plus users is something that's part of our DNA. And so partnering with a platform that has over almost 5 million sort of hash, those dollar sign cash tags searches a day uh, made a lot of sense. Twitter has a lot of business as well as uh, news dialogue that happens to it. And so that synergy felt like a no, no brainer for us. Yeah. I, how deep is the intersection between finance and social media, Twitter or otherwise? I, I guess what, what is the total addressable market of this look like and what does it mean from a financial opportunity standpoint, standpoint for a startup like eToro? Yeah, so the financial opportunity comes later, right? The, the, the first part of it is reach. Um, having, we believe that social investing creates reach and accessibility of knowledge about investing, dialogue about investing. And so ultimately that in itself ends up being a financial benefit. So of our 30 million users globally, around 3 million of them do trading and investing with us with funded accounts, right? So ultimately our, our thesis is that when you're in the dialogue sort of ecosystem, it creates opportunity, it creates knowledge and a sharing of information. And so again, that's why we're so super excited about this, this partnership because it, it matters magnifies that that conversation so so it's one part education essentially or, or education within a social media sphere and one part mm -hmm. potential on-ramp to future users on the platform yes so one part education one part dialogue right as social media platforms allow that and then ultimately also coming into our eToro.com ecosystem uh, to learn more about our services Lula, I want to get your sense of in retail investor sentiment. You guys did this survey of, of 10,000 retail investors uh, from February 20th through March 9th, and 70% said they were confident in their investments. But then on March 10th, we had SVB happen. So based on what you've seen in retail investor behavior and the chatter on the platform since, how much have things changed? Are people tilting more toward either safer investments, things that pay dividends, bond funds? I don't know. Uh, what are you seeing? So I would have two words for you when it comes to retail investors, resiliency and opportunistic. And that's exactly what we saw with even with the SV, when that when the crisis, the banking crisis hit, we saw retail opportunity and, and engagement rise that very same day. It doesn't mean that people are foolish and foolhardy. What it means is that the retail investor is becoming ambidextrous. On the one hand, looking at crisis and saying, how do I protect my portfolio with diversification and other things? On the other hand, how do I take advantage of crisis to be able to have gains in my portfolio? And I think that it's a welcome sort of sense of resiliency that we didn't see in the prior crises that we're seeing now. Yeah. Did you see a change in user behavior on the platform? I, I mean, I think about Betterment, which is a different company with a different business model. Um, but we had that company CEO on last week, and she talked about seeing record inflows into their cash reserve in, in the wake of everything happening with, with the banks. Have you seen similar changes to investor behavior or have you benefited in some way with new products? We have. So the, actually, what I would say to you is like they do three things all at once, right? On the one hand, we see searches and behavior for ETFs like Bill. On the other hand, we see searches for diversified ETFs like SPY or QQQ. Uh, and, then on the, and then on top of everything else, they're opportunistic about saying, OK, we're seeing all this macroeconomic news. Does that mean I go into technology or, for that matter, digital assets? And so you're seeing this sort of like trifecta or quadruple of opportunity plus uh, defensiveness.